First of all, I want to let you know that I am honored and blessed to be part of um, this gathering. I um, really feel that I've been blessed and I, I pray and hope that you have too through this time. Amen. And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to look around the room and see other brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all reaching and searching for the same thing. What, what a great fellowship we can have together. I'd like to just share a few thoughts about uh, the Holy Spirit's work in my life and uh, the way that He has uh, demonstrated Himself to me. As I grew up, I had my back to the sun, figuratively and uh, Actually, I grew up uh, on a farm, uh, difficult work situation. I also had my back to the sun. Jesus, I didn't know all of the goodness that he had for me, the goodness in store. Now that I have changed, I now have my face to the sun. My face to the glorious Father. And in the name of Jesus Christ, to be looking to that Jesus, my eyes fixed upon Him as I go. Amen. So I come to you out of uh, humility, caring very much for each and every one of you but yet wanting to lift you up in the holy uh, way that God does. Each person, if you had a story to tell, would probably tell of a mentor or someone who uh, was instrumental in bringing the word to you. So many of us had grandparents and, and parents that uh, brought us up in the ways of the Lord. But that's not so true this, these days. Many children now have uh, no one, uh, no mentor to, to point to that actually uh, is dedicated to the Word. But my upbringing was in the church, but it took my, the persistence of my wife to, to break through to me. She invited me to uh, a weekly Bible study, which I uh, grudgingly went to but I became to understand the purpose of studying on a regular basis. I used to sing in the car, and one day she said to me, on Sunday morning, I don't hear you singing like that. She said, if you can sing like that to those songs, you can sing that way in the church. And that got to me. And music has been a ministry of mine for the past few years. I had a six month old, we had a six month old daughter that went through some very difficult times. She was attacked by a virus that left her uh, lying in a bed with no um, particular reason, not knowing the, the outcome of her, her health. And at that point, I realized that um, it was comforted even during that time knowing that uh, God had uh, brought me to that point that he would carry me on no matter what had happened to her and just recently I had a chance to minister to my brother-in-law who had fallen into sinful ways had uh, re removed himself from the world because he was full of guilt and I was able to impart to him the words. A few years ago I probably wouldn't have had the right words to say but at this point in time I did through the Holy Spirit through his power I was able to bring him up out of that situation and turn his, him over he gave his life over to Jesus, baptized. 
He's a different person. He's a new creation in God's eyes. One change in me due to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit has been the absence of worry. I grew up in the years of, of uh, the Cold War and we all knew that with uh, nuclear technology that things could happen that could be very devastating to, uh, to all of us. And I was very worried about that. I was a very worrisome um, teen. But since I have uh, come into his ways, those kind of worries have gone away. Because I know that he has better things in store for us, that he does watch over us and cares for us very deeply, each and every one of us. The Holy Spirit's been at work since my baptism, but it was a period of time before I realized what that uh, meant and what the Holy Spirit has been doing. After all, the Holy Spirit promises eternal life. Why then would we worry? It f makes us focus not on the things of this world, but of the things to come. Amen. All of that worry can be erased. It can take years off of your life. The experts now say that worry or stress uh, can keep you from being healed. Um, it can even make you physically sick. But all of God's promises are designed and directed to reduce worry in our lives. In Matthew chapter 6, it said that even the, uh, Jesus' words, even the sparrows get their needs met. Why should we worry? Solomon in all of his glory was not as pretty as a flower that we see. All of his promises are designed to comfort us. Psalm 46.10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Amen. And through that, you can have a peace about things. Amen. Things to come. I still try to determine the outcome of things I do. The lack of that worry doesn't change that. I still have a determined will and I do, do things according to the will of God. It doesn't worry, doesn't, lack of worry doesn't mean that you're just going to accept everything as it comes and goes. I have a, a determined will and that's determined by the word of God. But if things don't go exactly the way I want them to, then I can be at peace with that. That tension is gone. Rulers and principalities may change, but God is everlasting and true to His Word. Amen. Right. He is consistent with all of Jesus' teachings. He's a complement to Jesus. It doesn't detract, distract, or negate anything about Jesus' ministry. Amen. And we've... Uh, talked about the scripture of where uh, it says that the Holy Spirit will not come to you unless when Jesus saying the Holy Spirit will not come unless I leave tells us that the Holy Spirit is is more effective than Jesus can be uh, when Jesus was here there were those that had backsliding tendencies we see that backsliding tendencies all through uh, as he guided Israel, the uh, people around him were un had unbelief, even though he uh, completed miracles right in front of their eyes. These are the human things that Jesus could not get past, but the Holy Spirit can. Again, not to distract, negate from Jesus' ministry, but a complete complement to Jesus' ministry. The disciples and apostles showed their humanness as they did not under, understand many of the things that Jesus said, but later we find under the guidance of the Holy Spirit they seem to understand. So I tend to believe that the Holy Spirit 
is more effective in leading us, leading us to God through Christ the Son. He is ever present to all who accept Him. He gives Jesus an ever presence. When Jesus was here in the body, He could only be one place at a time. That was Him being fully man. Only be at one place at a time. That, that was a limitation for Him. Even though He was all powerful and, and fully God, He accepted the, the body. He could be at one place at a time. The Holy Spirit is ever present to all. He's moved, the Holy Spirit has moved faith from the temple to the heart. The temple was designed to be the place of God through David. They're the gathering place that they can all come together. And now our heart, that's where our faith has moved. Our faith is now in our heart. The Holy Spirit changes going to church to a serving lifestyle. Not just going to a place and paying your respects. Um, it's, a, it's a serving lifestyle. It's a way of demonstrating Christ's love every step, step uh, that we take. A few years, two years ago, when uh, we were searching for a minister, the Holy Spirit was demonstrated through the way that David came here. On one Saturday, Sunday morning, the Powers family came with um, uh, Brother Fred. We had never met them before. And it just so uh, happened that we were interviewing Dave that week. And after the service, we knew that they were from where Dave had come from, from 78th and Independence. So we asked them, do you know Dave? And for the next hour or so, we were able to, to learn a lot about Dave and the reasons that we wanted him to be here. So the Holy Spirit was working through that, also through Ken Smith as he provided the transition time for Dave to come. Now I'd like to just tell a few things about me. We live in the day of a constant te technological advancement, but I'm very old-fashioned at heart. I understand that every advance in technology causes at least two social problems. Seem to take a step forward, but to many it's two steps backwards. I proceed with technology cautiously so as to not separate myself from God. I love the new advancements, but long for the day when things were simple and people had a sense of who God is, heeding right and wrong. We seem to have lost that. That's not uh, accepted, that's not known in today's world. When uh, Walt Puckett was here, he would uh, ask me my opinion on something, and I would state my conservative view about it, and also show my frustration in the, the unacceptance of that conservative view in the world today, and he'd say, you're right, Mike, but you're just too old-fashioned, referring to the world's view of my thoughts, knowing that it was consistent with his thinking. He was the one that got me started in Bible study, showed me the, the need for that. I have to give my credit to him for that. I'm a farmer at heart, and as long as I'm able, I'll know how to grow food for my family. I get a lot of satisfaction in planting a seed and watching it grow, reaping the harvest. I remember God each time I plant a seed. And as Tim said in John 12, the seed must die in order that there be new life. Jesus gave his life so that we might have life. Each seed we plant 
provides unlimited, um, um, not unlimited, but a large portion according to what is planted. So Jesus died as one for all of us that we might have life. Then I remember the parable, some seeds fall on fertile soil, some on rocks, and there will be unbelief, John 13. And the parable of the weeds, making me aware of sin, that it not grow up and choke out the plan of life that I've been aware of. Always remembering Jesus' words, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. I can appreciate God more in solitude in the garden. Connie didn't know this, but uh, this morning, she, or last night, I said, the beans need picked. She said, why don't you get up early and pick them tomorrow morning? She didn't know that it gave me a lot of strength for today while I was out in the garden this morning. I long to be in that perfect garden with Jesus. And if you don't want to be with Him now, how can you expect to be with Him for eternity? You see, we're, we're growing. And we're growing into His likeness. And we should long for the day that He comes back. And we're being prepared for eternal glory with Him. And if we can't show that now, how are we going to do that if He comes? We have to be ready. We have to be ready to, to serve Him and to be in glory with Him forever. One of my favorite hymns, I come to the garden alone, thinking of the way Jesus must have felt. Those around Him, those He created, they didn't recognize Him. They didn't believe Him. So, He died and went to be seated at the right hand for our good. So that we might have the Holy Spirit puts everything in perspective. Amen. I believe the Holy Spirit is present as we prepare to bring forth a message. I've spoken to uh, different groups um, both at work and here at church. And when I prepare a message for church, it doesn't come the same way as a message that I might prepare for a group of engineers or a group of, of people that I work with. It's totally different. The message is, is clear and it comes to me and I can visualize the whole argument. When I put together a message of worldly value, I have to work hard at that. Each and every little step is difficult to come by. I believe the Holy Spirit is at work in us as we prepare. I'm a people person. I love to stop and talk to people. I love meeting people that I haven't met, both of those in Christ and those outside of Christ. We were talking about this a little earlier. As you go in your walk, um, he kind of sifts that out, and some of your friends that might not be in the Lord, you just uh, seem to not have things in common with them, and you tend to cling to those who do have the same goals and aspirations as you do in the Lord, and you get closer to them, and I think that's a uh, blessing as we go on our way. I mentioned before that God worked through people all through the, the, the Gospels. He, did, he could have used things, but He used people. He used people like Abraham, Isaac, Noah, John the Baptist, Paul. He used real people that could relate to other people and bring the message forth. My grandfather was quite outgoing. He would, um, and it kind of embarrassed me at the time, we would get in the car, he'd say, let's go for a drive. 
We'd go out in the country somewhere and he'd stop, pull in the driveway, get out and say, Hello there, anybody home? How y'all doing? Say, I just wanted to meet somebody from these parts of the country. <laughs> it would embarrass me, but that's the kind of outgoing person he, he was. We don't see too much of that today. We uh, sometimes dare not go to one's door. Fellowship is very important. Brother Dean's brought this uh, to me. Uh, it's his idea. I'd always known that fellowship is uplifting and uh, very fruitful. But he explained to me that the reason that it is fruitful is because God has made us each one with different talents. So as we come together, we see the fullness of God through those around us. It's not just on your, looking at yourself. You see the, more of the fullness of God and what a picture that is of things to come. We miss this without fellowship. And some principles that I live by, we've talked about uh, this, living with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control encompasses everything in front of it. It's uh, the thing that will determine if you're going to stay in His ways or if you're going to wander. If you can't control yourself and your body and your flesh, then you will wander away. So you have all these things. Self-control is the determining factor. And that's in Galatians 5.22. Uh, as we fellowship, the people that we meet are familiar to us. They don't become familiar like in the world, when you meet somebody, uh, two people outside of Christ, they meet, meet each other and they become familiar with one another. We meet people that are in Christ, we are familiar with them. Yes. It just yeah. goes through all of it. We, we skip all those steps, you know, just go from step one to step ten. We're already on a different level. Yeah. We can already talk about more than the weather and, and, uh, and like. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, Brother Al said, we, we're not talking about the things of the world. We're talking about the things of the kingdom. And we can cut right to that. And the Spirit makes that possible. I expect to work before I get reward. I've always uh, not given up work. Although somebody asked about my education, I said the only thing that my education did is to make it so that I can make more money with less work. That's really all it's done. <laughs> but I still work hard, and I always will do that. Work is what we are here to do, God's work. My hands will always be dirty. There's uh, the dirt that comes off, and there's the dirt that doesn't come off. And. Um, I'm kind of a restless person. If I, if I uh, sit too long, I want to be doing something. So I'm always, I always pick up the broom or pick up the shovel or whatever. I'm that kind of person. I go over to someone's house to eat and I, I feel like I should do dishes. But that's just the way I am. I'm always doing work. My hands will always be dirty as long as I am able to. Run the race with our eyes fixed on Jesus. I seek the good in everything, it's there. Sometimes we uh, sell God short. And some things don't look like they're, they're good. But if you keep uh, looking at it, it's there. He says He does things all for His good. We always seem to look at the, the short-term outlook. All things are, are good. Uh, for the good of God. Sometimes you have to give up what is good to have what is best. Many people go have what is good and they hold on to it. But you have to give that up and, and have what is best, the things of the kingdom. 
when Jesus uh, told the one uh, there, let the dead bury their dead. There are other things to do that you can be doing. You've got to give up the good things to have the things that are of the kingdom. The hobbies that I pick up will always have to pass the test. Will it separate me from God? Or will it draw me closer? As we make decisions and go about in our lives, we try to manage things. We need to let the Holy Spirit guide us in that management. I've always seen management as just thinking ahead. It's thinking ahead and then it's reacting to what is actually happening. Now hopefully those two are pretty close to each other, but sometimes they're not. But, but it's not, not that hard to manage just to be thinking ahead than reacting on what is happening. Plan ahead for eternal life and being in the presence of God. And you need to practice right now for that. We've heard a lot of things about the Holy Spirit and I've heard people say uh, in a boastful way, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. But what they're saying is true. If they are in Christ, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. But we need to say that in a, in a, in a humble way, out of humility. Not boastful, but inviting. That we would draw others into that same relationship. Because you can get on a stump when you say, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Try to raise yourself above, above other people. But we need to be in constant humility. Pride will, will try to demonstrate itself and be raised up. We need to cut that tree down and stay in the humble depths down on the bottom. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A lot of people, I think, have taken that wrong. Uh, not making fun of, of anything that the, the scripture that Joshua said. But a lot of people focus on the house and not on the me. The Joshua was talking about himself and his family. The things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Don't put your faith in anything of this world. And definitely don't serve it. Your family will see the commitment and through the work of the Holy Spirit will follow as well. We've seen that in the families that are gathered here. It runs from generation to generation. God's word continues. And I praise God for that.